Hello, hola, buenas a todos. It is the Chancleta Generation Podcast. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hello, everyone. I am Clemencia, a Latina business owner, founder of Moira Studio, which is an advertising agency that speaks to Latinos in the U.S. because everyone deserves good advertising, of course. And I'm Cecilia, environmental and social justice practitioner, immigrant from Latin America, from Guatemala, and community weaver. ¿Cómo estás, cariño? Muy bien. Me encanta verte de nuevo. Me encanta Guapa verte como también. siempre. Eso <laughs> se <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today's topic is so important and I love this topic. Um, we've talked a lot about mental health here um, mm -hmm. and it's such an important topic because Latinos tend to bury it all inside and not talk about it. Mantener apariencias, which is, you know, keep a facade para el mm -hmm. que dirán. Um, And I love today's topic first because not just we're not just talking about the challenge that Latino youth are facing in terms of mental health, but we also have some very special guests who are working every single day to address it. And I love that because we're always trying to look for solutions rather than just like complain about the problem. Like complaining though, but it's Solutions. We complain, but then we're like, okay, this is what we could do. <laughs> so today with us, we have Victor Acevedo, who is a youth and mentor recruitment coordinator at Big Brothers Big Sisters of Eastern Massachusetts. Hello, 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 hello. And Terrence McCarran, who is the chief program officer at Big Brothers Big Sisters of Eastern Massachusetts. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Welcome. All right. So. Our agency, Murray Studio, has worked directly with your organization, and we love working with you guys because, you know, as soon as we started having the first conversation, we could really tell that you guys care. And not just care about the people that you serve, but you really care about improving yourselves, being better for people. Um, so it's like a very, you know, it's across the board, you guys just really care. And so, we, you know, we thought that this conversation was really important to have with you guys um, because, you know, so many people out there are like, well, I don't know what this organization does. Should I trust it? And, um, you know, we as Moira Studio, we strive to be sort of like a seal of approval for our community because we're working every day for them. And let me tell you, these guys are the real deal. So, um, so So yeah, so let's, let's start the complaining for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, uh, so, you know, we, we, when we started working together, uh, we were just coming out of COVID and, um, and we were talking about the deep mental health crisis that the youth were having, not just in Massachusetts, everywhere around the country. We had some really appalling data about, you know, rates of, Um, su attempts of suicide, uh, you know, rates of not finishing school, um, dropping out of high school, not going to classes, just, you know, kids just feeling pretty, pretty bad. Um, so, you know, could you guys talk a little bit more about your experience on the ground about this? Yeah, uh, Clemencia, let me start and just say that, you know, um, what you did with your studio, with Moira Studios, is you helped us communicate with our uh, Latinas, Latinos that are part of our family, our, the big family of Big Brothers Big Sisters, and help us figure out how to communicate better uh, with audiences that are part of our family already and new, new audiences that we wanted to get in front of. And part of the reason we want to do that is we have a real mandate to, to, to serve more youth at Big Brothers Big Sisters because of this moment that you're talking about, right? On top of all the statistics that you mentioned, uh, I think we know that there are increased cases of discrimination in America, increased cases of bullying, increased cases of negative online interactions between people, and maybe most saliently, because our job is to make mentoring relationships, increased cases of loneliness. Young people today, 
are going to have two to three less friends than young people did 10 years ago. That's really sad. By the way, there's also a loneliness epidemic amongst adults. Um, yeah. And we know that, you know, the more access you have to positive peers, the more access you have to caring adults, the higher probability that you are to maintain, a, you know, a sense of mental health, a sense of mental wellness. And that's really at the core of who we are as an agency at Big Brothers Big Sisters. Uh, we want to be able to provide young people, young talented future leaders with access to caring adults that will look after them, will promote their potential, will provide opportunities for them, uh, and, and in general will try to keep them from harm. Um, that's the core essence of our program. Love it. It's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, essentially, in a nutshell, you guys, you know, there's a there's a youth that comes into the program. You match them with an adult volunteer, mm -hmm. and then you, there's a matching process. You guys have gone through that with us, you know, like you know, you explain that there's a whole matching process about it. So a lot of questions that are asked, interviews, and all of that. There's a lot of vetting also for the mentors, and then it's sort of like. It becomes a relationship, right? Yeah, I mean, you you guys are you guys uh, are mentors. Have you are you both mentors? Just just Aaron. So I know I'll speak for me, and then I'll pass it to Victor. You know, mentoring has been one of the most important parts of my identity over the last 20 years. We're in October 2023. I'm two weeks away from celebrating a 20-year anniversary with my first mentee. He's 33 years old now. We raised, we raised girls together. We're both dads. Um, and, wow. and we've been able to stick together. We were texting with each other yesterday around uh, getting together for dinner. Um, and I'm also the proud mentee now uh, in a current match with a, a proud Latino senior in high school in a Boston public school. And we're gearing up to start looking at colleges for him. Um, and I want to help him through that important transition. He'll be a first generation college goer in his family and so i'm trying to support his mom uh, and his family with that process the discernment process victor isn't that admirable wow. right just to hear that how how, how long <laughs> friendships can last like when you know you have the support of the right people um uh, in, in those friendships i think um that's exactly um uh, what we do in Clemente, you mentioned something really important and is the um, uh, en enrollment process, we take it seriously you know, in the organization. I think this is specifically important to um, immigrant families and culturally, you know, how the problems in the family are solved by the family and it can be difficult for a mom or dad to let their kids go with a stranger, right, uh, into the community to do things when they're not around. So for them to know that this is an exhaustive process, that takes into consideration who you are as a person, where you were a few years ago, what are your you know your opinions on important social matters, including um, uh, immigration and inclusion. So we look into all of that, um, and you know, just as you mentioned, once all those things are taken care of, then you really just enjoy being in a friendship with someone that you didn't know, and that will make hopefully you know a positive impact. Will teach you about things that maybe as an immigrant uh, were unknown to you um, but that you can benefit from so much um, I am in a position today where I can be a mentor to so many uh, people that are lacking the information that I lacked when I was uh, a young immigrant in this country. And to be honest with you, we are so involved in the work that we do with families to the point where you feel like you in some way are becoming part of that mentoring um, opportunity that we provide to those families that you meet um, day to day. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like the, what I, you know, when, one of the things that I learned during research when working with you guys is that access to mental health uh, help is, you know, lacking is, in a, is an understatement um, between, you know, things are expensive, you know, not all the professionals are covered by insurance, like some of them are out of network and some people don't have insurance. 
Um, and also, people don't have time. People don't have information, like Victor said. So, um, so it's a it's a it's a real issue here. Absolutely, and I and I think the process is intentionally complicated, um, and, and so that that becomes a big barrier to entry for people um, getting effective mental health care. And I saw a statistic the other day that was that really scares me, which is that mental health workers, especially ones that focus on youth, could work around the clock, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and there still wouldn't be enough mental health support for young people. And so we have a huge segment of our population in our country, in Eastern Massachusetts and Greater Boston, that uh, would like to have additional services and resources, and it's just a, it's finite. There's just not enough opportunities for young people to gain traditional, formal, clinical support um, from a mental health worker. Um, Terry, do you think that the, in your experience it's, it's so vast, um, and, and not just for Latinos, but in general, do you think that there is more openness to access mental health? Because I think for a long, generationally, it might be like, I know I've had conversations with my own mother when I've been like, mom, this is a therapy issue. And like, oh, I don't want, like, what is going to happen in therapy? She's an elder, she's in Lebanese. And she, I think, had her first experience in therapy as probably in her 70s. And for a long time, I think there was a lot of like feeling of like, so she, I've been having therapy since I was in college and I has, have a current relationship with my own therapist for over 10 years. Um, so it's a person who knows me very intimately and has accompanied me in big chunks of my life, right? Like, but like even I've been accessing that bro. sometimes with more, with more frequency and sometimes just as like some maintenance. And, and I know and I receive comments from, from other Latina women but like, what do you mean? Lo yeah, local there's man. judgment uh, therapy. I like, and I'm like oh then you think like, and they will give me a thing so like this is the people who need therapy and it's like oh those are the things you think about me and they will look at me and say what you, you go to therapy and I'm like for 10 years I've been going to therapy so just like what is I said more is there more openness to ask for therapy to access therapy in your experience you know I, I think the answer to that is absolutely you know I've worked at Big Brothers Big Sisters for 20 years and globally I think the attitude about uh, access to mental health resources um, has changed dramatically from uh, deficit-based thinking, like I need to go into therapy because I have a problem, to something that is much more strength-based, right? Like, I want to be the best version of myself, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a trend we've seen over the last 20 years. And I, you know, maybe I would call on Victor to talk a little bit about what he, you know, he, he's meeting with families all the time, in particular, um, new American families and, and maybe what they're saying about trying yeah. to access mental health support. Yes, I see. I think, you know, um, there is more openness for sure and not just in non-Hispanic or immigrant communities but I think across the board and I think evidence of that is the number of Hispanic families approaching the program and then sharing with you during the interview process. This is sort of like my alternative to the fact that I can't get to see a therapist because the, the, the wait list is, is so long that I need to do something in the meantime. So hearing that interview after interview can give you a sense that, you know, our Hispanic families or families in general are mo more open to the idea of counseling and professional, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, help when it comes to mental health. It's just that they don't really have access to it right away or as soon as they, you know, probably need it. And I, I see that when I talk to families and we ask the question, we are very specific. Why do you want to join the program? And some of those families tell you, well, you know, uh, we need this. Uh, we can't access this, this type of service. And so we talk to school counselors and they're saying, go to Big Brothers Big Sisters. You can find, you know, the additional support that the kid, the family needs. And um, I think it's a, it's a good thing that we exist so that those people have the alternative, but it's also concerning at the same time that people don't have the access to the mental health services that, that they need. Yeah, men mentoring is not a replacement for clinical support or mm -hmm. therapeutic care. Uh, I just want to be really clear about that. That's still for some youth exactly what they need. Um, but I think mentoring is an incredible companion um, to, you know, receiving therapeutic care. Um, having a caring, responsible adult in your corner can have an incredible effect on your sense of self, right? Your self-worth, your self-esteem 
the way you approach work, maybe even your openness to enter into therapy, to talk about yourself, to want to open up more, to feel worthy of support, right? Um, those are the kinds of things that mentoring can influence in young people over time. Yeah, and not only that, but um, it, there's also something to be said about having somebody else besides your parents that you can run things through. So, I mean, sometimes, especially as teenagers, the last person that you want to run things through are your parents. And God knows your friends don't know anything. <laughs> so sometimes it's just nice to, you know, have somebody else to to talk about things or to talk about how you're feeling or, you know, it's just nice to have an extra person as as a young person. I kind of, you know, and I and I talk about this a lot. I I didn't really have a lot of mentors in my life, especially women. You know, like I, I felt like a lot of times I was just going through this on my own, trying to come up with, you know, trying to build the airplane as I was flying it all the time. And so it's, I kind of wish that I had somebody that could like lead the way. I was like, okay, this is how like, you know, college, this is how you look for work. This is how you negotiate your salary. This is how, you know, you do interviews as a woman. You know, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that's really important just to help navigate the world, like as much help as we need. We all need a lot of help. It takes, they say that it takes a village, but I think it's not just like for kids, but it's like, as you grow up, you know, as, as an, as an older adult now, I'm, I still have mentors. I still look to people. I still call people and ask them for, for advice or for help because it's always a learning experience and so it's like you know it's just a normal thing to have in 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 a lot of cases you know latinos if they're immigrants yeah. they don't know anyone and so where do i get the mentors and um so it's there's a lot of challenges that our community could face that you know having a mentor could could you know could 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 really help I'll just quickly respond to that and say one of the best things about effective mentoring is it makes you want more mentoring, right? Uh, and to your point, Clemencia, you know, if you want to live a healthy life, you should always be looking out to have active supports in your social circle, right? People that inspire you, people that will push you out of your comfort zone, people that bring new concepts, you know, send you an article on Instagram or something, right? People that are always trying to encourage you to think differently or to approach, you know, uh, a new experience in life, for example. Uh, and so I think that's really, really important. And the other thing that what you were saying made me think about is, you know, the great benefit of mentoring versus say your parents or a coach or a teacher is that mentors do not have to hold you accountable to a particular result, right? Mm. You, there's no yes. there's no discipline in it necessarily, right? If you're a parent in a home, you have to make sure you maintain your household. If you're a teacher, you're trying to provide content and make sure your students learn. Coaches are trying to pu push towards a certain result. A mentor has is is free because their goals are very flexible. We're a one-on-one -on -one program, so it's specific to every child's needs, right? And a mentor can just listen. There does not have to be judgment in it. There does not have to be accountability in it. And that's what makes... There's not like a score. Exactly. And that's what makes mentoring such a powerful thing is it's unconditional when you think about it. Yeah. You know, I was just going to say that you said it from the beginning, um, Terry, that it was like this kind of like epidemic of loneliness. I, all, like, I think you're deeply referring to having connections to someone and as I think my generation at least today I was talking to some colleagues and saying like I grew up in you know in, in Guatemala City in but but I spent a lot of leisure time and I spent a lot of time with my friends playing on the street for example and we had a lot of our things that we did for years and these are friendships that to this day, I've moved away from the country over 25 years ago, and I'll go back and I'll send a text and say, I'm in country, and we'll get together. They, you know, I hear from them, 
and, and I think I have, I have a muscle to build relationships like I, I have practice mm-hmm. and I build them along my life as I move through but like you're referring also to like learning to make connections and Clem you're also referring to what happens with that disconnection happens of immigration right like you're leaving you might have you might be leaving because you're immigrating you might be leaving because you're a refugee you might be leaving voluntarily or involuntarily and there is a break-in and an uprooting you know of, of where you are your bases where your family is where your friends are yeah, and your like, network and when you lose those connections i think that that is deeply saddening like it's a big loss and especially for a small person in, right like big feelings and small bodies yeah and, and there's also and, a big sense of fear you know what they don't know you know we don't know and if our if we can send our parents sense it in our parents maybe if you're coming yeah. with you know with a family which you can even i think children are very perceptive at attuning to their parents yeah anguish or like fears or like you know like they, you take it on sometimes you take it like i you know you feel your parents yeah And I, and I think like some of this fear and we've talked about this before some of this fear turns into um like being very strict or being very like the scorecard you gotta have these things and so that puts a lot of pressure on kids you know and so it's like okay i'm lonely and i have all this pressure and i have to do well in school and i have this bully and like i have an accent or or i'm, I'm this color of my skin or what there's all these compounded things that you're just like how do i deal with all of that if i'm an adult and it's hard for me to navigate i you know i remember when i was a teenager it was extremely hard for me to navigate all of that the bullying because of my name the bullying because of my hair because i had glasses because the color of my skin because i had an accent there was so much there was there was so much material for those bullies and uh <laughs> and also navigating my parents not knowing much about like you know access to resources or also navigate the college experience or navigate there's so many things this is like in an from an immigrant perspective obviously but um but uh you know sometimes you know even in second or third generation um some of these people are like the first ones to graduate from college and so it's like how do you how do you navigate that you know rising up from you know um other uh, uh, other levels of income also brings a new level of complexity that you're just like okay what do how do i navigate building a network you know for uh you know for getting a job like we were just talking about this in another episode about this uh latinos uh, opening businesses it's like okay one of the first things that you need to open a business is a network and if you haven't grown up yeah. in those circles where do you get this network so you know so you need like someone to like hold your hand and help you out and introduce you to people i mean we were just in a conference last week and we actually had this one guy who had been in the conference for many many years he's like hey here i'll introduce you to a bunch of people you know that i know like that is we were like we call them the sherpa he's like our little sherpa it was great uh so it's like see those other you yeah sherpa Clemente, you know what? you can get me going on this because as an immigrant i know how how much information we lack and you hit on something that i think is very important it doesn't matter whether you are first generation second generation third generation if you didn't have the information in that first generation you can only pass on what you know and uh if i yeah. did not grow up knowing about the many opportunities that college can offer me my children will only have access to the information i can pass on to them and this is where mentorship and especially in the um uh uh hispanic community i think is so important this is the country of opportunities to us immigrants we come here looking for those opportunities and some, sometimes it's, it's the fact that our parents are so focused on providing the basics a shelter you know a roof over our head uh food uh clothes to wear and just send us to school and that's that's really 
a huge you know effort that it takes them to be able to provide those basic things right but there's so much more i mean mm -hmm. college applications going to study abroad and being part of a mentoring program like this is something that gets you one step into that world of endless opportunities as, a, as an immigrant uh, kid, whether you're first generation, second or third in this country. And the best thing of all this is that the key to that door, which can be Big Brothers Big Sisters, it's free, you know, and I feel like a lot of immigrant families don't know that joining the program, having their kids be friends with someone who has information, who has the time, who is willing to make the commitment um, is free. Um, some families already know, I think more should know, but also more big brothers and big sisters of our Hispanic communities need to know so that those littles uh, from immigrant countries can not only have someone with the information about this country, but with the cultural context, right? Uh, that looks like them, that can understand them in their language. And I think that's why it's so important that, so you guys watching, uh, if you if you are from you know an immigrant background, if you are from a Hispanic background, you joining is crucial. Um, because those opportunities, um, you know, may start with you for so many kids waiting in the program. Yes, we're going to be 25% of the population and, uh, you know, a grand majority of the population is under 19. So we need a lot of help. <laughs> All those kids need some mentors. <laughs> Do you... Do you have, how is your process? Do you have like big wait, like waiting lists? Like how, how, how does that happen? How that, how does that, you know, connection happen? We do, we do. People in our program um, do, do unfortunately wait sometimes. Um, I'll give you an example. Last calendar year, sorry, last school year, so July to June, we had over 4,000 families reach out to us and ask for a mentor. Unfortunately, we only have the capacity, the staff, to make a thousand matches. So uh, every single year, for for every four families that reach out to us, we're only able to serve one. And so, what comes from that at Big Brothers Big Sisters? I know it keeps Victor and I up all night. Is is you know we have a mandate to expand our services and get to more and more families. Um, and then within that big number, right? We really feel like we want to hear from more Latinx, Latino, Latinas, right? We think that we want to expand our services there. We know right now that. Uh, only 12% of our matches last year did families that we were serving identify as coming from a Latinx culture or Latino or Latina culture. And so we want to try to push that up number. Like you said, Clementia, we're on a track to have our local population be at 25%. I think it's currently in greater Boston at 20% or in or around there. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we're doing, uh, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of matches, um, but not enough. Um, especially within that cohort. So we want to get better. We want to come and have conversations like this so we get the word out about our program and try to engage more families and more volunteers in our services. Um, so could you explain, I mean, Terry, you, 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 you talked about the joy that you've experienced from being a mentor, mm -hmm. but you know, there might be some people that are like, hey, I'm a busy person. Like, do I really have the time? Or, you know, how much commitment is this? Also, like, am I good enough to do this? You know, there's so many questions that people may have or, you know, just mental barriers that they may have that are keeping them from becoming a mentor. Like, do they need a degree? Do they Those need, you know? Can, can we talk those, about those this? Those are incredible yeah. questions. I, I think my the answer I always give to that question is I'm I'm extremely ordinary as a person, <laughs> and I have a busy life. I have young kids. I have uh, a job. Victor and I work together. We're as I just described. We're stressed out. We're trying to get work done every single day. Um, but there's there's always time in life for important things, and I would file my time as a mentor as some of the most sacred time in my week or month or year. Uh, and it's a time where I feel really deeply connected with somebody. I get to care about somebody else and their growth and their trajectory. That's so good for my mental health, my sense of happiness. You know, there's studies on happiness. I know Harvard did a study. Uh, people are at their most happiest when they're taking care of somebody else, right? 
And I feel a deep sense of satisfaction being a mentor in our program. And so, you know, no credentials. Uh, you just have to have a good heart and a desire to want to learn, be culturally responsive, be a person who wants to learn about a different family, to integrate themselves into that family, right? To be humble and, and do this work. That's what's required. And a couple hours a month uh, and some intentionality, a text message once every couple days, you know, to, to have someone greet the day with a um, with the thumbs up emoji or with the power emoji, 100% emoji, right? Like, you know, I'm just trying to inspire and uh, just going through the machinations of doing that myself. I feel like such a, uh, my, my life is so much more fulfilled by what we're doing. So uh, there's very little credentials required to do this and, and the outcomes for volunteers are incredible. And Valencia, it's fun, you know, to those people watching and thinking about joining and, you know, going through uh, the QR code and the, to our website to find out more information. It might sound scary when we talk about the importance of opening up opportunities to people and it might sound like, oh my God, I need a degree and I need to know about this. And I, But no, uh, it's a simple process to join. And once you join, it's really just like your other friendships. You know, what I tell the, the people that I interview is think about your current friendships, the people that you look at as family. That's exactly how it is. You don't want them to be gone for three months without knowing about them. You sometimes don't want them to be there all the time, but you want to know that if you need them, they'll be there. You want them to know that you're going to check in with them to just ask how's, how are things going, maybe meet up you know, once uh, or twice a month to check in with them. That's exactly what um, we facilitate to families. And uh, you, as a volunteer, then reach a point where you're the one really looking forward for more than the minimum requirement, which is just twice a month for at least a community-based program. Because you really develop a relationship with that family, with that little, to the point where it's like, like when you die to see your nephews and nieces and it's like i just want to see this kid and ask how things are going at school or catch up on the last thing that we talked about it really is fun we of course have to look into serious stuff just because we know we have to make sure that it's safe for everyone but once all of that is taken care of it's really just a naturally flowing uh friendship that grows uh with the time and commitment that you and the family and the little put into it um i've met people that have been in those friendships for years and you know they're they're really just family um i've interviewed people that um have other um uh, matches in the family and they went from just being uh, a, a match from big brothers big sisters to being the uncle that visits every christmas or um the, the you know first um uh um the first man at a wedding so it really is a fun experience and as terry mentioned you just go to bed feeling like oh my god you know like i'm making time to do something that is going to be extraordinary for someone else and what i'm putting into this is is not you know is not um shaving a half day uh, every day of my life uh, but it means so much that little time that you may put in twice three times a month in, into, into someone's life it just goes such a long way and I think it's it's a win-win for everyone love that love hearing that I mean do you think that you I keep thinking about you know the obstacles that maybe people may be thinking about and I keep thinking like is there like a level of more confidence and like anglo-americans of like yeah i can do this and then is there like less confidence in like people of color that are like okay well i'm maybe i'm the inadequate to do this like is do you send do you see a sense of this happening i can i can tell you that my perception when interviewing uh big brothers or potential big brothers and big sisters is that there is lack of, inf of information about what the program really hopes to do um you know like you don't need to have the best job you don't need to have a lot of money in the bank you're not ex you know you're not required to spend a penny of your money into this um you're not required to have uh, a degree or you're not required to have everything settled in life so that you can be an example or so that you can be a mentor and i, I feel like a lot of our yeah. people and our uh, uh communities of minority have the mentality that you know if i haven't made it in life how am I going to be a mentor for someone, right? And breaking free from that mm -hmm. has been uh, key for those people that I've interviewed. And when, when I share with them, no, you know, 
you don't need to have money. We're not, we're expecting for this to be about the friendship, not about how much money you're going to put into it. Um, you don't need to have a degree. If you have the time, if you have the willingness, if you have the good heart, as uh, Terry mentioned, that's really the basic of what's needed. And then you're going to meet that family and you're really going to learn about what the needs are. And although they are, in a lot of the cases, financial, um, what they're expecting from you is presence, is to be there, is to, to be an additional source of support when that little wants to make a phone call to talk about school or when that little is ready to talk about mm -hmm. uh, college or high school. Uh, so I'm telling you, it really takes this little to become a big brother or a big sister. And then what you get is so big, it's so, so big that people end up referring other friends, people when their matches end because they're their little friend, uh, little brother or big older sister, um, you know, grow out of the program. They want to be rematched into the program with another little. I'm telling you, the takeaways are, are, are you know, so much, so many more yes. than than what you think you would have to put in. So I want people to know that the first step to find out more about the program is signing up, getting into that interview, ask your questions if you have to, and be convinced that you know this is really a life changing experience. Yeah, you know, you brought up a great point because I remember that you guys talked about how many mentees end up wanting to be mentors when they grow older. And so it's like a, and uh, it's this like cycle of, you yeah. know, of giving, of like, you know, like if, if once, once you receive something that is so valuable to you, you want to give it Correct. to somebody else just so they can feel the same way that you did. So that's like, that's such an important thing. And, but like, you know, I feel in our communities, we've had to like, we, we didn't have that. We didn't have someone like doing that to us. So it's really hard to break that cycle of like, okay, now it's time. Or like, just people are like, you know, saying, man, my life has been so hard all the time. And like, really nobody has helped me out. Like, why do I need to help people out now? And it's just like, well, because we need to break the cycle because we need this to, we need this to get better for us and and so you know this is a way to do it and sometimes we just need to suck it up i mean i know that like i've said this before it's like you know as like a latina business owner yeah it hasn't been easy for me but you know i'm i'm always like whenever another woman opens a business i'm like please pick my brain i'm happy to help you because i just don't want another latina to go through what i went through i just don't want it I want to create a world in which another and somebody else is trying to do the same thing does not have the same obstacles that I do. So if you see it, feel the same way, let's do this, guys. I love that. <laughs> the end. I'm over with the rant. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I do. They say like, you know, All right, so I just say Clementia, like, you know, mentoring is really about two things. One is, uh, one is listening, right? Um, one of the most impactful, radical things you can do is really try to deeply listen to another person and understand where they're coming from, right? You think about your own life and how rare it is to have somebody in your life who just wants to listen to you um, and wants to know your thoughts and ideas. And to go back to what you were saying, I think the other critical concept in mentoring is being a role model. That, that doesn't mean you're the finished product and everything's perfect in your life. We don't need people to role model that, right? Uh, if you're a young person and you're striving and you're pushing, what you need to be around is other strivers, other people with ambition, yeah. other people that have obstacles. Let's role model that, right? Let's role model striving together, pushing together, learning how to thrive in adverse situations together. That's the very best form of mentoring. Yeah, you have a great point because if, if it's somebody that is like a millionaire or whatever, it's like, that's really hard. That's a hard step to get to. Like, how do I do, how do, I do this? You know, Clemencia, <laughs> mentoring is not just about giving. You know, mentors in the program are not just giving. Um, a lot of them are also learning from those families and from those little. A lot of them end up liking... Uh, things that their littles liked and they had no idea that they would be interested in. A lot of them end up uh, learning new hobbies and, uh, you know, being curious about new things that they never explored. Um, it's just like such a easy and again free way of like 
full, you know, fulfilling your life with like fun and 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 good memories. Um, one thing that I want to you know share with the, the people watching is that this is not a program where you're only going to find people struggling you know and where you should feel like oh my god you know i'm also struggling how am i going to be able to help someone else struggling whether it is financially or emotionally um we welcome everyone the program welcomes absolutely all families to join um so some littles really just need a big brother because they're the only child some other littles need a big brother because you know parents are too busy at home some other littles uh you know need a big brother because they need to work on their social skills there's an array of reasons why people join so i want you know those potential mentors out there watching right now uh to know that you know this is this is not complex this is important but it's not complicated um and it it really is as easy and simple as going to emasbigs.org uh submitting uh you know uh, a request for more information for someone to call you and give you more details getting interviewed and then meeting a person that can change your life and that whose life you can change forever you know what I like about what you said, Victor, is, and I think for, through this conversation, sometimes it might feel a little transactional. Like, you know, when you're thinking, if you're thinking about like, oh, what do I have to give? What are they going to, how is it like, but if, and I think what's the point I was trying to make before, there's somehow yeah. connection, that that loneliness, that those experiences that we bring, or that you can have here if like you are in a situation in which there is this connection from, you know, um, to, to co like what deep listening, which is what Terry is referring to, allows you to do is to connect right. with someone, to get to know someone. And I think that to look at these relationships as being in right relationship with someone else, instead of just like, I give, and this is how I feel better myself because I offer something that is more like about, I always think about it more like in that paradigm of like have and have not in more like being in right relationship and we all have something yeah. to learn from one another. Right. I love that. Love that. Love Clemenza, that. you said it once, you said to, to us that like, you know, the Big Brothers Big Sisters community, right? The big family of Big Brothers Big Sisters was like a society within society. And it was a more ideal version of society where every <laughs> single day we're gonna talk about equity. We're gonna try to lift each other up. We're gonna be of the mindset that you know, success will be collective success, that we will all work together to value what's unique about each other and we'll want to push each other to have a better future. Each and every single one of us, mentors, mentees, guardians, everybody we come into contact with in our program. And so, Cecilia, what you said like really resonates with me and, and, and commences, hit us with that knowledge already once before. And that's that stayed with me to this day, years later. Yeah, you're just like, building the world that we want to build it's like uh you know it's like when i love i love watching the british baking show because they're all so cute and nice to each other and it's like oh that's the world i want to live in everybody wants to help each other out and they're like you know running out of time they're helping each other make the cake even if they're their, their opponent yeah let's do it perfect <laughs> love that so if people want to learn more i know that you just gave us the url for massachusetts but um, you guys have organizations all over the country. Um, so where, what, what should people do if they want to know more? I'll take this one. I'll start off. And Victor, make sure I don't mess this up. So uh, locally in the greater Boston area and all of eastern Massachusetts, including the south coast, Cape Cod, and the islands, please visit emassbigs.org. Um, and if you are outside of eastern Massachusetts, you can go to bbbs.org to learn more. There's lots of helpful information about how to sign up if you are a family that's seeking services or a potential volunteer. There's great testimonies for people that have been in our program. And no matter who you are, we have the right program and the right circumstance so that we can use your goodwill to make something positive happen in the world. Wonderful. Well, this is all we got for today. We've. Um, drop some awesome awesome truth bombs and also i don't know just sharing our 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 want to build a better world is like so evident in all of us and you guys are always beaming talking about this like i love the body language and the energy that you're bringing so 
Um, so again, thank you so much uh, for coming and you know sharing your experiences and um, and also for doing all the things that you're doing because you're doing you're doing a lot of hard work, um, but a lot of necessary work. So thank you for giving for opening your heart and doing so much for the community. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Muchísimas Thank gracias. you guys. And if you like this episode or any other, please give us a rating and you can get in touch with us at Chancleta Generation in uh, TikTok and Instagram and Twitter is Chancleta Gen. And you know how to spell that, of course, guys. <laughs> and I will see you next time. We will all see you next yes. time.